everybody. <laughs> Hello from, from your favorite artist request here, Mr. Q12. Welcome to a new episode. This time is about thermistors, specifically an NTC, you can see it here, NTC thermistor of 1K, of 1000 ohms. This is a test, just quit what I'm having here. I did it a couple of days, probably one week ago. I, I tried a lot, a ton of things, actually I tried, uh, until I reached at this stage that you are seeing it right now here. Uh, actually, I took a break from it and I reassembled it right now to make the movie because uh, if I'm not making the movie, I, I kind of, it's kind of lost in in, uh, in the past, you know, as a, as a past experiment. It's good to document it. Uh, what I'm having here, uh, this is my heating element, is a 1 ohm uh, resistor at 50 watts, like this, you see, 1 ohm, 50 watts, and and this is the, the actual thermistor, it is looking very much like a diode, and it's very confusing from this point of view. What I did here, I'm having two of them actually, here, this one which is uh, unaltered, and this one that you are seeing here is it is altered uh, actually i having i'm having two probes this ntc thermistor that is altered like i said is modified a little bit here and this other thing you see like a little uh, piece of uh, wire with a blob with a metallic blob on top of it this is the sensor uh, from my thermometer that uh, electronic thermometer that i'm having here so uh, it, i'm taking two temperatures uh, in the same time theoretically from the same spot the area where, I, where i'm taking the temperature is is pretty much the same but let me let me first uh, present what i'm having here and then i will go into the the problems because it is a very big problem with this type of sensors uh, i'm having this power supply just here on the bench from another experiment and i'm, I'm using it is a atx power supply and i'm hooking it up to five volts a negative rail these two in the middle are the negative and this yellow one which is more like a brown right now is the 12 volts so that's the five zero zero volts and then 12 volts uh, you should know these things and that's it i'm powering this one ohm and it's taking uh, about one minute to heat up to about uh, 50 maybe 55 maybe 60 degrees celsius and then what i'm doing practically what i'm doing uh, i'm powering the power source from this plug and i'm leaving it there i'm reading the the temperature there from that probe, and when I'm reaching a certain value that I like, I'm just unplugging the power source, and that's it. I'm disconnecting my heater that I'm having here. That is that simple. This is how I'm 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 creating a, a heating element, relatively variable heating element. When I'm plugging it out, you will see that this will still rise in temperature a little bit. It's like a inertia. The metal case is catching the heat more slowly from already extremely heated coils that are inside it. So this will heat up to catch the heating that is inside a little bit more slowly. That's why apparently it is still rising up the temperature of this external case. For a, a couple of seconds actually, for a good couple of seconds, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds like that, and then it's uh, reaching a, a peak and then, or a limit, and then it's staying there a little bit, a couple of seconds, and then it's starting to decrease. That's the, the behavior uh, that you will see here. So it's this is normal, this is not a problem. What is the problem is the sensor. I use it in its, original shape like you are seeing it here and then i alter it like you are probably seeing there let me zoom in so what i did you cannot see it very well i hold it like this and i went here to my uh, to this instrument that i'm having here uh, polizor is called in my language i only touch it i only touch uh, with the spinning wheel this glass mesh that is having on top uh, by only touching it by the spinning wheel it's shaved <laughs> and flattened I, I created a flattened area and that's exactly what you are seeing there so that's flattened i got very close to the um, to this copper cylinder whatever it is there that is holding probably that's the in the middle is the sensor the actual sensor and this is like a leg a copper leg and this is another copper leg that is holding the leg <laughs> the holder for the leg or something you know uh, i believe the entire leg is from copper and then is, uh, is uh, treated uh, nickel like this. Uh, depends on the fabricant, uh, or from the factory probably, how they are doing it. So that's what I did there, that's the alteration. Why I did it, it's because I wanted to get way more closer to the heating element. One of my theories why I was having a lot of errors was that because of this glass insulator that I'm having all around it, that created some delays, shifting in reading. You, you will see, I will present everything and I will present the, the shifting uh, as well, as, as clear as I can. But this didn't solve it or it helped a little bit, but too, in a too small amount, uh, I didn't see an instantaneous result. Probably it did help. So a little bit, this uh, shaving of the glass that I that, that I did there. So that's my my setup that I'm having here. So this is the circuit. It's uh, what I'm using here. Uh, I'm using only one from all these four, or two actually, uh, two of them. Uh, this, this is more uh, advanced circuit what I'm having here. Uh, until uh, these two, I, I only used only one uh, side of this chip. Uh, so it's two of them. Uh, these are comparators. 
Uh, they are not op-amps, uh, digital comparator, I, I like to, to call them uh, fully. So this uh, LM393 is the name, you can see it here, specified, and um, this is the actual chip and the actual uh, uh, pins for its comparators inside it, and how I linked everything probably there. I don't know what I did here. <laughs> uh, I don't know what stage, what uh, what experimentation I did there uh, anymore. Let's uh, let's start the experiment actually. So what, what the sensors are doing are staying beneath, or better say, on this flat surface here, which is paint, it's not metal. So it's not making any kind of short, ideally. I, I hope so. Uh, so pretty much basically what I'm doing, I'm putting this on top of those sensors and that's it. And I'm powering on my thermometer here, which is already reading uh, 30 degrees Celsius. This is the ambient temperature, by the way. I didn't power up anything. This is uh, very cold, as cold as it gets uh, in, in, uh, in my room here. And I am having this power supply, five volts that is powering here with these two alligator clips, this circuit. And, and the probe uh, is also powered from, from here. And that's it. Next, I will have to power this uh, power supply, heat up my element, and basically watching this thermometer go up, and this LEDs go up and down. And here you go. You can probably hear it, my power supply there, that is started. So I, I power it. The temperature here is starting to rise. Let me kind of move it like that. Okay. And around, I believe, 40 and 50, I believe, what I did here. I don't remember exactly what I did. We should see. Yeah, yeah, 39, almost 40. This guy lit up, and then at 50, this guy will lit up. Which is not 50, <laughs> but it was 50, trust me on that. So on 43, that one <laughs> lit up. All right, so th that's the skewing, it's skewing. Okay, that's it, uh, and I'm unpowering it. And as you can see, it, it is still rising there. It's unpowered, but it will reach a level, and I'm helping it by blowing on it. So 58, 59, <laughs> to 60, almost. All right, what I'm doing to cool everything down is I'm doing this. <laughs> so. What you are seeing probably is the surface that is heating up. It was heat up. And I'm blowing a little bit of air. Yeah, that's it. So 35, uh, actually these are the values probably here. 36, 47, 55, I believe. This is a set of, of temperatures that I took. But here, these three guys are with this one, with this sensor that I'm having here. So let's uh, let's put down the values and you will see how everything will shift as I'm increasing the, uh, the temperature and how everything will shift down when the thing is cooling down pretty much. One another uh, co possible cause of shifting is because this glass element is staying, is remaining or is maintaining hot a longer time or cold a longer time than the, the pure metal, uh, naked metal sensor that is there. So it's a clear difference from these two probes. They are not the same. Uh, th this is the major issue uh, that I'm having, testing uh, with two different probes pretty much. One possible cause is because of this glass element that I'm having here, uh, around, that is surrounding the actual uh, sensor that is inside. Uh, I, I try to shave it off to get more closer to to, it, to the, the actual sensor inside it, but not really, not a satisfactory conclusion. Uh, I still got the shifting in reading. It's not shifting in temperature, it's shifting in reading the temperature. That's the problem. Uh, you'll see it in a second. It will be clear very soon. Yeah, you see, if I'm taking out the sensor, this is the, the actual sensor, both of the LEDs are lighting up. So for you to know if they are blinking, it, that's why is from making a pull connection inside it. So uh, this is a test of uh, readings that I did most probably with that thermistor. And like I said already, this three I took them with this new one. I prepared here a little piece of paper, and we will write down the values here what we are seeing there. We will pay attention to first one. It should lit up. It should have yeah, yeah thirty nine point seven. Okay, so uh, this number one and number two. Uh, number one representing this LED here, and number two is, uh, is that LED, uh, the second comparator from the chip. And this is the first comparator of the chip. You see it's 38, one degrees down already, because this is cooling down, but very slowly. It was 39, now it's 38. Yeah, it, it uh, shut off. Let's plug it in, let's make it hot again. You see it's a couple of uh, tens of seconds. Yeah, 38.6 this time. And uh, let's pay attention to the second one. This one. 41, 42, 43 it was like last time. Hopefully it will get to the 50. 45, that's good, that's good. Yeah, here, 46.8. So, and uh, this will uh, continue to rise up. It doesn't matter that. We are cooling it down <laughs> like that. And 40... I didn't catch it. I didn't catch it. Let's let's do it like that. So, 47-ish, 47, 46-ish. 46 46.8. Uh, what I wanted to, to show you... Okay, so it's maintaining at 46. And uh, now is it's pretty close to, to this uh, values that I that I ha I'm having here. You see, it's 47, 47, and this is, it should have been 36. So this is when the temperature is increasing. So I will put a little arrow pointing up, like that, when, when the temperature is increasing. And uh, this is again, uh, some sort of ambient because this place is heated up probably a little bit and it doesn't want to go down that easy. And let's see, 
14, exactly on 40, 43 now, 43. <laughs> yeah, um, okay. uh, and uh, the maximum is 45 right now. Well, it's good, it's good. I don't know. I'm not 46, probably, whatever. Let's see when it's going down. 42, 43, let's see, 43.5, 40, it's, it's jumping too, too quickly. 43.8. Probably. Uh, actually, the range is a bit more drastic, is more larger. So now it's like three degrees here difference, but it's usually is like five, six. Sometimes I get it to, to 10 degrees even difference when it's going down. Uh, here I played a little bit. Okay, it needs a little bit more, more hit. So now I'm, I plug it in. Now it's increasing. Yeah, 44.7. So it was somewhere in the middle there. And now I will wait to cool down by itself. Uh, I will blow some air on, on it. To cool it more, more faster. All right. So now it's 47. Mm -hmm. So this uh, second one is when I was playing with with this when I was taking it out one and off. So this kind of doesn't matter, kind of. But it is telling the story a little bit. This is telling the the shifting. Is showing the shifting uh, that when it's increasing is is lighting up that LED is lighting up at one value, and when it's cooling down is showing a completely different value, and it's not precise on a certain degree. It's not accurate. It's not specific to a certain temperature. I cannot draw a graph when it's shifting up and down like this. You know, uh, when, when it's increasing is is at one value. When it's decreasing, the temperature is at a completely other value. It should be a single value when it's increasing, and when it's decreasing and uh, reaching that value, it should turn off. It should be like that. Now it's reaching 44.5, and this guy is still lit up. 44. So now it's cooling down by itself. So 43.8 was the last catch that I did. 44, almost there. 43.9. Let's see if it's uh, 3.8, if it's the same here. Come on, to 43.0. <laughs> okay, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, good, good, good. good. You see how big the shifting is? This is 4 degrees from 46. <laughs> okay, now, now, 41.9, 41.8. So this is the 41.8, 5 degrees to the moustache, less than when it was heating up. It, this value, I took it when was the element was heating up. And this value here is when the element is cooling down. And here in the middle is when I was uh, switching, uh, moving it around, forcibly cooling it down. Let's see, now it's 40 degrees, point zero, good. So let's see, uh, when, let's see this other one, if it's still uh, about five degrees less. Who knows, who knows, we, we will see. Probably it will be this 36 that I noted it here, probably. So 39.7, so it, it passed already that point and we have to wait it. So 79, almost uh, one degree difference. And uh, now, come on, now is one degree difference. 37, two, two degrees difference. I'm also blowing air on the element there to cool it more faster. And in the same time, keep an eye on this and that. So 37, good, good, good. It is good because it is confirming or showing, better said, is showing the, um, the exact same behavior that I had it until now, these days of hardcore experimenting actually. And I couldn't figure it out what the hell is going on. It is what it is. I mean, it probably it's a poorly designed element, but you have to, to understand it a little bit. I will talk about it in a second. Uh, let's pay attention here. What's, what's this is doing? So 36 is uh, three degrees. Ah, 36.3. Yes, and it is actually confirming exactly what I'm having here. Uh, that 36 is here, 36.3. So it's um, how much? Uh, not much, not that much. Three degrees difference from for the first one, and here is five degrees for the second one. And I had even uh, bigger uh, differences. This five, which is a very big difference, very, very big difference. This five degrees difference is, is not good. It's not good at all. It's, it's very annoying. At least these days that I did all this experimentation with this specific uh, thermic sensor, I realized that this, uh, and I also find its uh, data sheet and its its actual name. I realized that they are go very good for very high temperatures, up to 300 degrees, uh, if I remember right, uh, because it's having that glass insulator that is insulating uh, for very high uh, temperatures. And they are very good uh, to take one single temperature and they are not very precise, but is, they are good enough. Tiny little bit of shifting in the reading is not be, such a big deal when you are dealing with very high temperatures. So even these temperatures that I'm having here, 40 degrees uh, or 30 degrees, uh, this shifting is kind of kind of mm, manageable. Uh, it is like hinting you. This is more like a hinting temperature element. It's hinting you, yes, dude, you reach that uh, area, th that zone that is hit up at 
relatively that temperature. It's not very, very, it's not that precise. And this was my biggest issues that, that I wanted to, to solve and I, I couldn't. I couldn't solve this uh, problem with this shifting in, in reading of the temperature. I couldn't solve it. I, I, I tried to peel off that glass uh, to get more closer to the sensor element there, but it didn't really help. With, with this entire element that I'm holding right now in my hand, probably it got that 8 degrees or 10, even 10 degrees uh, difference. This one is a bit more sensitive, but it's not that sensitive as I wished. It's not that, uh, that specific. It's not that accurate. It's not that uh, precise like this other one that I took the reading with, you know, that, which is bare metal. There is not surrounded by any isolation. This is our very, very uh, unprecise sensor. But even even if it's unprecise like that, it's it is still good to give you uh, a hint that you got a let's say it's a certain temperature that you, you reached, and it's kind of good enough. And right now I'm actually crazy enough to build it. Uh, right now I'm in the middle of this circuit. Is exactly what you are seeing here on the breadboard, but I'm using two comparators and I will lit four LEDs, four ranges, uh, 30, 40, 50, and 60 degrees. And they will be crappy as my experiment that I'm having here. I'm, I'm, I do expect to be as crappy as that. It will be good enough. It will be okay enough, you know, even if I will have such a big uh, tolerance. This is a very big tolerance between readings. This is incomplete what you are seeing here is in the middle of making it. Uh, I am making a movie about it actually, how I'm making it. So this is it. This is the, um, the test that I did for this specific uh, temperature sensors. And they are crappy. <laughs> they are very crappy, very imprecise, very out there. But they are good enough for certain applications, but not for, for precision application. Uh, or maybe, but I don't know how to take a more precise reading from, from them. That's another problem that I'm having. I, I did my best here with the comparator. Probably there is, there might be a way of using um, a little bit of programming, probably with Arduino or with uh, Ensembler for peak microcontrollers. But probably it will be more easier with Arduino to take a, a reading and make some sort of algorithm that will that it will deal with all this uh, shifting probably or, or something i'm not completely sure but it might be another way of more precise way of reading it than what i'm having here to to, uh, to more accurately uh, know this kind of shifting to know it to test it hard enough and to note down uh, all the values and to uh, to pay attention to what is consistent what is the same every time and then make that algorithm in uh, programming and based on that algorithm, uh, it will be very precise, theoretically. But you have to test the shit out of it until you, you, you will get all the, the data from it. Right now I'm using this one kilo, I did specify it here actually, one kilo, this is uh, the value of the, of the sensor. And here I'm using another one kilo. Uh, as you can see, this is a little board that I'm having here. I'm having that black resistor there, it's one kilo there. And that's it, the rest are just metallic pads. And I'm thinking maybe this arrangement also is contributing to, to shifting because that resistor is heating up as well. It's too close to the, the sensor. But I did this test with the sensor linked to, only to the wires and um, I got exactly the same result, even worse results than this one. This is the problem, this is the issue. I don't know how to solve it uh, better than this. I only explained the obvious things that I could find. Do I recommend that? Depends on your uh, application. If you don't need uh, accuracy, if you can use it for very uh, brutal temperature reading. Uh, but for finer uh, reading, for precise reading, I do not recommend it at all. Or at least I don't know how to, to use it. With Probably there are other circuits in this world, uh, different from this uh, comparator one that I'm doing it here. Probably there are more sophisticated uh, chips or even uh, programs or algorithms that uh, can kind of uh, deal with this uh, misbehavior. And also, I'm not another aspect of this problem. I'm not completely sure where is coming from this shifting. It is from the sensor. It is from that uh, little resistor that I'm having there. It is from the comparator because it might be from uh, a sum of little errors. That's a little error, another little error, long wires, a little error, uh, the comparator, a little error, and all of them sum up will give me a bigger problem. That's that's another point. I, I, I really don't know. I, I'm suspecting, I, I'm highly suspecting is this shifting is from this uh, thermistor sensor, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's something else completely different. Maybe this is very precise and I'm having crappy <laughs> uh, arrangement here, but I doubt it. I doubt it. These are the faulty, or um, not faulty, but unprecise uh, thermistors. It's not because they are cheap, and they were very cheap. I don't think they are fake or anything like that. I think they are very good, actually. But the application that you are using is uh, is not meant to be used with a precise reading. Pr most probably. That, that, that's my conclusion. Please prove me wrong, and do share if you find another way of more precise reading than what I did here. Yeah, that's it. That's it about this experiment. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you like it. Also, leave a like for your favorite artist, Mr. Kutolf here. I say to you, goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna go to the hospital.